Hey guys, Static here, and today on Dungeon Guide we're going to be covering Veteran Hard Mode Blackheart Haven. The first thing I want to share with you guys is the pirate costume trick. Everybody come to this basket, make sure everyone in your group does this, get the pirate costume and equip it. The reason we do this is because you can actually skip every mob leading up to the first boss, with the exception of the dogs. The mob's nameplates are yellow, they don't know that you're not a pirate. The dogs, however, can smell you. Go up this right staircase as there's going to be a roaming dog on the left one that comes down towards you. This is where you need to be careful and watch how close you get to them. You need to move quickly and along this ridge to get past both of those roaming dogs. As you can see, our entire group makes it past the dogs and we have actually skipped the entire first part of this dungeon leading up to the boss at the end of this bridge. The number one priority on this boss is to get behind him and away from the edges out here. The reason being, this boss's main mechanic is a kick. He turns and he kicks a random party member right in the face and you get knocked back very far, very fast. And if you go down off of that edge out here, you're going to aggro every monster in the beginning of the dungeon that you didn't pull. The best way to do this and be safe from this knockback is to come back into this back room. His other mechanics are just heavy attacks and a spinning attack, but the kick is deadly if you're out on that open deck. Watch as my buddy to my right gets kicked in the face. It's so fast and it's unblockable, so you definitely are much safer gotcha. back in this back room. Generally on this boss, I like to pull him down right to where we are here and fight him here. We get greedy and try to go for a chest and he actually aggroes, so now we have to fight him over to the side. He does an AoE smash on the ground and he also has a conal attack which is like a poison vomit. You'll notice from his cauldron on the left there will be a giant disease ball that shoots out and leaves a big AoE on the ground. Get out of that. He also does charge attacks and oddly enough he charges back up on top of his platform here. Literally all of the mechanics on this boss fight are AOE. Just further confirming that you should have pulled him down the ramp further where it's safer. In fact, if you do this, you're actually out of the range of these disease balls. When he's low on HP, he grows to a ginormous size and gets a big heal. He then continues his smash and charge attacks back and forth until he dies. This next section has a ton of harpies, and they're kind of buggy. They get stuck up in the air, and it's hard to kind of clear them all, and it takes a while. So what I like to do, if your group has the AoE to support such a pull, is to pull all the harpies down to this one section. You hook a left around here, back into this recess, and everything will gather up through line of sight, and you can burn them down all at once. Just make sure you bring massive AoE damage and massive heals if you want to pull this section like we do, as each individual harpy doesn't hurt a whole lot, but everything added up together, it can really hurt. <laughs> Try and ignore the harpies in this fight. Just let your AoEs tick them down and really focus on this boss. She has a one-shot mechanic, and you must interrupt it. This attack is similar to a Templar's Dark Flare. She bows her head, brings her fist next to her face, and you'll see it glow purple. When this happens, that's when you need to interrupt. You'll see this right here. The rest of this boss's attacks are pretty basic. She does heavy attacks, she turns and throws a flying dagger at a random party member, which doesn't hurt a whole lot, and then she'll do an ambush behind whoever she wants, and then she does a spin attack. This spin attack doesn't do a lot of damage when you're at full health, but at low health, it actually acts as an execute. This boss specializes in flame attacks, so vampires beware. Her regular light attacks are ranged fireballs. She also has a charged attack that she can turn and spit a line of fire on the ground towards a random party member. After so long, she will teleport to reposition herself. When she breathes fire up into the air, this means you need to start moving. It's going to be a firestorm, and as the fireballs hit the ground, if they overlap, it hurts a lot. Her last attack is a conal flame attack, which can be bashed. Hidden away in these long hallways will be introduced to the Bone Colossus. They don't do a ton of damage, but they have a high HP pool and they do summon skeletons. Their only other mechanic is a Conal Foot Stomp.
This next boss is pretty simple. It's just a tank and spank. So have your tank spin them around, hold the block button, and you and your DPS buddy just burn down and get your big DPS numbers as there's not really any mechanics to watch out for here. Congratulations, you found the pirate's booty. Be sure to look around here as you'll find heavy sacks, sometimes chests, trunks, baskets, all kinds of things to loot. So let your inner pirate out and enjoy your treasure. There are several different methods people like to use for this boss fight. I'm going to share with you the way that I like to do it and the reasoning behind why I made that choice. I like to pull the boss here, right where this liquid lightning is sitting. No further back than this point though. If the boss gets pulled past this crack in the rock, he will reset. So keep that in mind and have all of your party members on this side of that crack, but tight up against this rock. As your tank goes to engage this boss, make sure he activates hard mode by reading the scroll next to the chest in the middle of the beach. After Captain Blackheart has been engaged, he'll stop and start to summon skeletons. He keeps summoning skeletons throughout the rest of this fight, and that's why we chose this position. As you see, all of the adds will gather in one position because of line of sight, and one simple AoE attack can burn them all down, giving you more time to focus on the boss. Captain Blackheart will turn and change one member of the group into a skeleton, and they have no attacks on their bars, they can only do light and heavy attacks. During this time, your party member that's a skeleton could go down and damage the adds if they wish, or they could just wait it out here with the rest of your group, as one AoE attack from one DPS is enough to take care of all of the adds down there, because we chose this position. Captain Blackheart himself doesn't do a whole lot of damage. He just turns people into skeletons, he does light and heavy attacks, and he does a little spin attack. I think the reason they did this was to keep you from being in too much trouble if your tank gets turned into a skeleton and can't hold aggro. Your biggest problem here would be when your healer gets turned. It's a good idea, even as a DPS, to put a couple heals on your bar just in case that scenario happens. The hardest part of this fight really is managing the adds, but because we've chosen this location, we've taken a mechanic that's generally really difficult and made it very easy. One single AoE from either one of your DPS and everything melts. Simple. Thanks for checking out the video guys. Please smash that like and subscribe button below for future content releases. I really appreciate the support everybody's been showing me. So I want to just say thank you to each and every one of you. It really means a lot to me. See you guys later and catch you next time.